Okay, we are ready to go. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome, Water Conservation Subcommittee meeting. We'll go ahead and get the call the meeting to order. Secretary Montoya will please do a roll call. Yes. Board Member Wright? Here. Board Member Grable? Here. And Chair Battenford? Here. Let the record reflect that all subcommittee members are present. All right, and as a friendly reminder to the committee, uh, only three microphones can be used at any one time. So please mute your microphone when you are not speaking and please speak close to the microphone. I'm often guilty of it, so I don't know if I'm doing it close enough. <laughs> uh, we'll now go ahead and take public comment on item two, uh, public comment where anyone may address matters not listed on the agenda. If you are in the room, please move to the microphone and wait for the timer to appear on the screen. Anyone wishing to make public comment who is present at the meeting will be able to use the microphone. Thanks. Wayne's going to talk from our back. Oh, actually, we could have you go forward if you like. It's all good by me. I just wanted to give you this. This is a little flyer I think each of you can get from the secretary of yeah. the oh, meeting. Okay. I'll discuss it. Hello, my name is Dwayne DeWitt. I'm from Roseland and I'm here to talk about water conservation in a different way than you might be used to. And that's actually saving water in creeks. We have some riparian corridors that run through the city. There's a lot of different things that go on with those, but the main thing that I find that could be helpful for water efficiency is water that's left in creeks goes into infiltration and helps for the groundwater aquifer to be recharged. This is important out in the southwest area of Santa Rosa, Rosen, where I'm from, because many of the people there still are on wells. Now, Mr. Grable may remember that he was near Roseland Creek in the past on Burbank Avenue, where the city has been able to get 19 and a half acres set aside as a nature preserve and a park area. Now that creek right there could be a stepping stone for even better water conservation in Santa Rosa because a portion of it next to McMinn Avenue is owned by the Sonoma County Water Agency. And the water agency and you folks working together could act as lead agencies to get funding from both state and federal funding sources to help with the riparian corridor to be kept as nice as possible. It goes to the west onto Roseland School District property. And then it goes on out to the Laguna de Santa Rosa. And that goes to, uh, well, it goes further out and then Laguna de Santa Rosa, then out to the ocean, Russian River, the ocean. We don't want that water to all go away out there. We'd like to keep as much water in this area as possible and explore what's called stormwater retention basins, utilizing riparian corridors as a way to do it. And then last but not least, I've got a couple of 10 second videos I made about water coming off of the parking lots at the Santa Rosa Plaza during a rainstorm. And it's amazing how much water goes to waste during those rainstorm events. I haven't been able to get it to Miss Montoya yet because I'm not skillful at some of the technology that's needed to get those clips from me to you. But we'll get that done and you'll be able to see those 10 seconds at two separate spots gallons and gallons and gallons of water just going to waste. And we really need to find ways to deal with the commercial entities, the people that have big properties to somehow do rainwater harvesting along with their basic approach. 
Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. DeWitt. Seeing no one else, we'll move on to item three. Uh, approval of the minutes from September 12th, 2023. Are there any subcommittee questions or corrections to the minutes? I actually just have a question. I wasn't a member of the committee at the time. Do I need to abstain from approval of the minutes? Yeah. Okay. Okay. The minutes can be approved as submitted. And we'll move on to new business. Uh, Director Burke will introduce item 4.1. Thank you, Chair Badenfort, members of the committee. Our first item is gonna be our Water Awareness Month and Water Use Efficiency Awards. And making the presentation will be Heather Avilas, who's our sustainability rep and recently um, back from maternity leave, so. <laughs> I am. I've been giving this presentation for probably over nine years now, and I'll apologize. I haven't slept more than a couple hours in the last seven months. <laughs> so these numbers were getting a little jumbled, but I think we got this. I'm going to share my screen. Oh, yes. All right, thank you and good afternoon, Chair Badenfort and members of the board. My name is Heather Aviles and I'm with the Water Use Efficiency Team. I'm here today to get your approval for our Water Use Efficiency nominees, as well as talk to you about our Water Awareness Month. Ever since 1998, our Water Use Efficiency Team has been giving out awards to community members and businesses who have gone above and beyond to save water in our community. Most of these people have participated in multiple of our programs at a time. This year's commercial award nominee is going to Fountain Grove Dentistry. They participated in both indoor and outdoor programs. In the landscape, they removed over 1,500 square feet of turf and installed a weather-based timer to help improve efficiency in irrigation. We estimate this will save them just under 63,000 gallons a year. They also installed 220 gallons of rainwater storage. You can see right under their roof in the corner there. And it, they refill and fill those barrels. So we estimate, especially if you have sporadic rain like this, that it saves them about a thousand gallons a year. Inside, they participated in our sustained reduction rebate, which allows them to convert um, technology. Basically, it provides a rebate for something we don't have a program for. So they converted their old wet vacuum system, which is the vacuum they use in procedures. It uses water to create the suction before, and they replaced it with a newer technology that doesn't use water to create the suction. And it's more of an expensive technology, so not many dentists are adopting it at this point. So we're it's going to save a lot of water at this site. With all those projects combined, this commercial site is estimated to save around 72% of its average water use. Our multifamily award nominee is going to Burbank Housing. Burbank Housing is a um, multifamily business that has low income housing around and helps with low income properties in Sonoma County. They are going through our direct install program to replace over 579 toilets with high efficiency toilets. They're also upgrading all the shower heads and faucet aerators to be the most, most efficient standard. We estimate the lifetime savings of this project to 
save over 900,000 gallons. Our single family award nominee this year is Alan Ziff. Alan removed all the turf in his front yard, which is approximately a thousand square feet. He also installed a weather-based controller and the combined savings of this is about 17,000 gallons a year. Unlike some other projects, he incorporated a big stormwater feature that collects rainwater from his roof and allows it to sink into the ground and help refill our aquifer. It helps reduce flooding, prevents erosion, and as well as many other benefits, including keeping water in the soil so he has to irrigate less. Moving on to Water Awareness Month, as most of you know, May is Water Awareness Month. So on May 21st, we'll be going to the city council for the proclamation of Water Awareness Month, as well as presenting these the Water Use Efficiency Awards at that meeting. We advertise through our normal methods of social media, radio, as well as heavily through our local partnerships, both Water Awareness Month as a whole and the individual activities that we participate in. One of our favorite activities of Water Awareness Month is the eco-friendly garden tour that the Sonoma Marin Water Saving Partnership puts on. This year, it's Saturday, May 18th from 10 to four, there's 26 gardens around Sonoma County that you can sign up to get a map and go visit. They're low water use demo gardens. There'll be 11 of those gardens in Santa Rosa and we'll have a informational booth at one of those locations. They expect over 4,000 people to sign up for this as well. This Saturday, April 20th, we have our Earth Day event. It's 12 to noon at Courthouse Square, downtown Santa Rosa. The water use efficiency team will be hosting an irrigation controller workshop from 1 to 3 p.m. at the City Hall's Sustainable Educational Garden. We're going to teach our customers how to use their irrigation controllers to ear irrigate their landscape properly. And then every year since 2008, the city has been hosting our Water Smart Expo. The Water Smart Expo highlights water efficient plants, vendors, um, a lot of hands-on demos such as the rain barrels and gray water set up. And it's just a chance for the community to talk to professionals in our area. This year, it's hosted on June 26 at the Wednesday night market downtown from 5 p.m. to 8.30. And we'd love to see you there. Now to circle back to the Water Use Efficiency Awards for this year. It is recommended by the Water Department that the Board of Public Utilities Water Conservation Subcommittee approve the proposed 2024 Water Use Efficiency Award winners. Thank you uh, for the presentation. Do we have any questions or comments from the committee members? I have no actual questions about your presentation. Nice presentation. And you. You, I'm happy to see our residents and uh, conserving water so efficiently. Uh, but is the uh, Russian River Watershed Association uh, student videos, is that happening this year? Oh, that is with Sonoma Water. And I believe they're doing that again, but we're not participating in that. I got a frown over there. Uh, no, I was just trying to see if um, Peter Martin, I was going to call him up to speak to it, um, if our RWA is doing the videos this year. I always thought that happened some simultaneous with our this event, but maybe not. We used to do the, uh, the children's poster contest. Yeah, I remember that. In association with it, but that stopped in 2020. Okay, so it's 
Peter, you're gonna. Yeah, I, I don't know at this moment. Um, I can check definitely on the Russian River Watershed Association's plans. Um, I have not seen anything um, go out regarding that at this point, but definitely, yeah, in the last few years, they did uh, abandon the poster contest, unfortunately, through the partnership that was usually coincided with all the Water Awareness Month activities too as well. So, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Well, we will... Um... We will follow up and get that information back to the committee. Um, I don't know, and and also sometimes they have different themes, so it could be mm -hmm. stormwater theme, um, but we'll, we'll definitely get that information back to the committee. Yeah, those are always fun to watch. Um, uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, I'm ready to make a motion. We want a motion? Are you ready? Are you going to talk, Chris? <laughs> Yeah, I just had a question in our, in our um, it's not surf and turf, turf or ca cash for grass. That's mm -hmm. is it cash for grass? <laughs> is that still the name of that program? Yes. <laughs> um, I need like two more cups of this coffee. Yeah, but I'm you probably now. need. Um, mine's two and a half, so he actually sleeps you know, oh. four hours at yeah. a time. It's crazy. Um, I noticed in the is the residential the single family award. Um, I'm just curious because I noticed that as someone who teaches uh, fire resilient landscaping and land management at JC, I, we 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 find this a lot where like you teach a defensible space and or a resilient landscapes kind of uh, methodology, and especially when it comes to defensible space. And I think also when when folks are removing their uh, their turf and their lawns, uh, sometimes there is like a a really big decrease in just um, vegetation coverage and and plant matter and like the heat sink issues. Are we finding that um, with the cash for grass program, there is sort of a what worries me a little bit is that. Yes, it's a great incentive, but when you're talking about like revegetating as opposed to maybe just doing, you know, DG and cobble and a you know a, a retention basin, um, is there enough of an incentive there? Because I know it's supposed to be for the landscape design for native plants. Like the cash isn't just like hey go buy a TV. It's for mm -hmm. purchasing native plants and or landscaping materials, right? Right, they don't uh, they don't get the rebate until after we've inspected. Right. So it's it's yeah. after and they have to adhere to a long list of guidelines and we are very aware of that. In in the past we saw that people would want to just throw down rocks uh -huh. and uh, we don't allow that. So we do we are moving towards more plant coverage requirements. So we do require at least 50% plant coverage at maturity of the plants. So some that's, this one was just planted. And so um, we include- Oh, I see the small starts now. Okay. Yeah. yeah so we 50% we, coverage is once those shrubs actually grow. Um, we also allow existing tree coverage. So if they had a tree in the turf area, that counts as part of the coverage? Based on kind of bird's eye view canopy coverage or whatever. Sorry, what was that? Based on like a bird's eye view canopy coverage. Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, exactly. But we are very aware mm -hmm. of that and we we discourage just putting rocks down for that reason. And we really encourage more plants being put in. Yeah. Um, there is definitely a benefit to the stormwater features oh, and yeah. a lot of people do it yeah. decoratively, but this one was put in yeah. professionally and it was, it was measured for the, um, to hold the amount of water that could come off his roof and had the proper runoff system as well. Okay. So um, most of the time you don't see this many rocks in a lot of our gardens. Yeah. But it was and I know it's a push, it's a push and pull. Like I, I, I certainly, appreciate the the groundwater recharge aspect but then i'm always like well are we giving people enough money to actually like revegetate to where it's not 
just creating a, you know, not that lawns create biodiversity, but, you know, there is a habitat differential between like, you know, cloth and mulch and rock and, you know, some sort of, um, you know, plant and, and, and soil coverage. So active I see what you're saying. soil coverage okay. and, and just like the, the, all the heat sink studies now about that. And I'm like, okay, what I see now some of the little, um, the starts and like how that will most likely look a lot different in a, in a few years. So that I appreciate that. But yeah, from my first look, I was like, that's great for groundwater. But wow. And there's no plant coverage. And I'm like, they're very small. I was like, okay, <laughs> right now, okay. It'll be more plants. And I could see, yeah, I could see one trip to California for a bunch of, you know, sea anathas and other things. You still probably max out your, re your rebate amount, but you don't right. get to see how big those are until, yeah, I appreciate that. Right, it's all expensive, so we rebate as much as we possibly can at this point. No, but yeah, it's always yeah. <laughs> that. Well, that's what I, I was like. Are is it enough to, especially with inflation, and when you're talking about getting diverse plants from, say, yeah, California right. or whatever, right? Like you're like, how far does it actually go to cover the square footage? You know, our max square footage uh, rebate amount, or what? You know what I mean? I'm. Just, it just interests me about because we deal with it in my other work of like does the incentive achieve the outcome we want, you know? But I, right, I really appreciate There's a lot of research it. on that. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, just a couple of comments. I really, mm -hmm. um, I really like the scope and the diversity of the awards, actually, that we make. It's a good, it's a good variety of making sure that there's a commercial, uh, kind of a multifamily and a single family. It really allows us to kind of showcase the different things that can happen on properties. Um, on the irrigation controller workshop, you know, every mm -hmm. time I do something with BPU, I learn more and more about what we offer. And of course, if we go right to the website, we can see everything that's offered. But if we're not somebody who goes to the website and see what's offered, for example, I work with a lot of housing and homeowner issues in my daily life. Um, and the more that the more that the that the city can hear about it from the from the more avenues as possible, I think there would just be a tremendous amount of uptake, evidenced by was it almost four thousand people expected to sign up for the mm -hmm. garden tour? So congratulations on that. That's Thank fantastic. Um, I don't think I have any questions. Um, if there aren't any other questions, I'll entertain entertain a motion in a second. I move to approve the. The recommendations for nominees uh, for the. Um, oh. Would you mind putting up the slide for the. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, I, I move to uh, approve the recommendation um, for the Water Use Efficiency Award nominees for 2024. And I will second. Thank you. We have a motion by board member Grable and a second by board member Wright. And now we will open public comment on item 4.1. If you're in the room, please move to the microphone and wait for the timer. Anyone wishing to make public comment uh, who is present at the meeting will be able to use the mic. Thank you. My name is Dwayne DeWitt. I wanted to thank the staff for the hard work they do on these water awareness awards. And I'm especially thankful that today we got to see an example of something I had just spoken about earlier. I've never met Mr. Ziff, but the idea is out there. So you can see how it actually gets put into practice. And this is something that could happen with many of the riparian corridors and creeks in our area. If you wanna see a firsthand effort on the things we're doing for Earth Day, you could do it at Roseland Creek at 10 in the morning and then still go downtown to the Santa Rosa Earth Day stuff. You'll see us out there at that riparian corridor looking at areas where we can make improvements to save more water. And then last but not least, <clears throat> the Burbank housing effort is really a good thing to get. Almost every apartment owner should know about this and find ways in which to implement this, but many of them are not as um, well informed as Burbank housing, which is more politically aware. And many of the multifamily uh, apartment owners over in Roseland might not be as tuned into this as they could be, especially along Delport Avenue 
and along West Avenue and um, South Avenue, where <clears throat> numerous properties are actually multifamily. And then last but not least, what's really a very important part of all of this is encouraging more plantings. And I would encourage that we do urban forestry and urban greening and encourage people to put trees in wherever they can also, especially because one of the things about our sustainability and resiliency approaches is that trees can take out more carbon sequestration and be more helpful on that effort that the city's also trying to do. So there's many ways in which we could be helpful. Water's the lifeblood of nature. If you put nature near water, you get more nature from the water. So please look into that. Thank you kindly. Thank you. Seeing no other public comments, Secretary Montoya will please do a roll call vote. Yes. Board Member Wright? Aye. Board Member Grable? Aye. And Chair Battenfort? Aye. And that motion passes with three affirmative votes. Thank you. Thank Ms. you. Lina. All right. Moving on to item 4.2, Director Burke. Thank you, Chair Battenfort, members of the subcommittee. Our next item is our direct install program update and Rebecca Baker, our administrative uh, technician will be making the presentation. Um, I just also wanted to uh, just if, if with the chairs, uh, okay. I just wanted to say um, uh, a big thank you to Rebecca. She actually was acting um, on Heather's behalf uh, while Heather was out on maternity leave and she did an amazing job keeping all the programs running. Uh, we are incredibly grateful to have Heather back, but also just wanted to note how much I appreciated um, the extra work that Rebecca took on uh, while Heather was out. So, so thank you for allowing me to say that. Thank you, I appreciate that. So good afternoon, Chair Benford and members of the board. Um, I'm Rebecca Baker with uh, Water Use Efficiency for the time being. And uh, I'll give you an overview of our Efficient Fixtures Direct Install Program. Over the past 30 years, the Water Department has sponsored many programs to get water-saving toilets and fixtures in use in the community. We're currently running a direct install program where customers receive toilets and fixtures installed in their homes without charge. And for this program, plumbers remove high water using toilets, toilets with 1.6 gallons per flush or more, and replace them with the most efficient fixtures available. Similarly, fixtures like shower heads are replaced with high efficiency models. So our high efficiency shower heads. And the current program is funded through a $1.5 million grant from the California State Department of Water Resources. And there's no cost to the city except in staff time. To let customers know about this program, we focused direct outreach efforts on residents who might not have the financial wherewithal to replace their toilets themselves. However, all toilets were replaced on a first come first served basis, regardless of finances. We had more than 600 requests to pre-qualify high use toilets in single family homes. We were able to pre-qualify 1,500 residential toilets at single family and multifamily sites for replacement. And those replacements at single family sites are almost completed. Um, replacements at commercial and multifamily sites are ongoing. Some examples of the replacements, you'll see the before on the left and the after on the right. It's a little hard to see the difference, but in terms of bathroom and kitchen faucets, the only things that are changed to make them more efficient are the aerators on the end of the fixtures, so the fixtures remain the same. After the installs, city staff conducted random inspections uh, at a subset of sites to evaluate whether fixtures and toilets were replaced 
correctly and to get feedback from customers. The current program has resulted in over 1,200 toilets replaced to date at more than 400 sites, which will result in quite a bit of water savings. And overall, this program began with an announcement to the public last May. After we received the $1.5 million in full in August, we started the replacements. Since we had pre-approved single family toilets for replacement, we closed the pre-approval list in December. Commercial and multifamily replacements continue as we wait for funding from a second grant to schedule more residential replacements. With the second grant, we anticipate being able to replace 2,500 more toilets. This grant is from the federal government and administered through Sonoma Water and matching funds will be required from Santa Rosa Water. So that concludes my overview of our current Efficient Fixtures Direct install program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Baker. Do we have any questions from the committee or comments? Just uh, thank you for the presentation. Good. Uh, is uh, has there been a, any other competition with Niagara on a 0.8 gallon per flush, or is that still the only company that's doing the? Uh, They're not the only one. I think there's at least one other company that's doing it. But we had used that company's toilets in the past and found problems with them, so we chose not to include them in our um, allowed toilets for residential toilets. On the commercial side, there are some others. The, the um, level is not at 0.8, it's, it's 1.1 and 1.28. So there are some other manufacturers who have toilets available at that level. Yeah, I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. Just curious. I actually own three Niagara's. They're, mm -hmm. they're very good toilets and they're very dependable, but um, I just can't believe that nobody else has gotten into that market. Well, it's sort of the ultra low. The yeah, point eight is that, the lowest but... of the low. So they're getting there. Yeah. They're actually on the second model of the Niagara. Yeah. They we had the model we thought we were going to be installing, they were discontinuing and replacing with a new and improved version. So we ended up doing both of them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have a just a couple of quick questions and mm -hmm. forgive me if I'm thinking of something else. Okay. Uh, but if I do Recall, were there on the 1.6 gallons per flush minute per flush minimum? Mm -hmm. Was there a discussion that we had not too long ago about potentially expanding that? That maybe there were some potential applicants or toilet owners that were just shy of qualifying for that 1.6 gallon? I might be thinking of something else. I also have a personal experience where I, I asked my husband about our own toilets. And I think that he reported back to me that we were just shy of being able to actually qualify for it because our toilet was just was just efficient enough, <laughs> but not necessarily efficient enough, I think, for the standard that we're looking for. So the last round of installs we did with the efficient fixtures direct install program several years ago, I think we were installing 1.28 toilets. Is that right? Mm. No. It was also 0.8? Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. So there are a lot of people out there with 1.28s. Okay. And so those those don't quite qualify. Don't quite qualify. For this particular round. Yeah. Um, and on it uh, on the five plumbers that were qualified through the competitive bidding process, I'm just curious about vendor capacity. It's always been something from big projects to small ones that mm -hmm. we've struggled with as a city to get enough. Was five enough? Would we have wanted more? Was it harder to get more qualified? Do we need more for the future? We had six and one dropped out because they didn't want to uh, do the, uh, they couldn't make the numbers work basically. Um, five was definitely enough. Okay. Um, it just depends on how each plumber prioritizes what they're doing. So some plumbers were very quick to prioritize our work and get it done mm. and others were a little bit slower. So it really depends on the plumber themselves, I think, as to what the capacity is. Great. All yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Sure. I appreciate it. Thanks, Ms. Baker. That's all I have. Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay. And we'll move to item 4.3. Director Burke will introduce. 
Chair, just if you could ask for public comment. Oh, my apologies. My apologies. <laughs> we will now move to public comment on item 4.2. If you're in the room, please move to the microphone and wait for the timer. Seeing none, uh, we will move on to item 4.3. Thank you, Chair Badenfort, members of the committee. Our last update is going to be um, our water use efficiency program updates. And Stacy Hatfield, our acting water use efficiency coordinator, will be presenting. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me, Chair Badenfort and members of the board. My name is Stacy Hatfield. I'm the Water Use Efficiency Coordinator acting currently and wanted to just share a little bit of what we're working on and what we're doing currently in water use right now. So as you know from some of the earlier presentations, we've been working on water conservation for the last 30 years or so, and we've invested about $30 million in that which has resulted in us, um, excuse me, has resulted in us saving over 7,000 acre feet per year of sustained reduction. We've done that through toilet replacements to the tune of about 56,000 toilets and re replacing about 4.2 million square feet of turf. Some of the rebates that we're currently offering customers to incentivize them to participate in our programs include clothes washers for commercial and residential customers. As you can see, the rebate value is slightly different because the commercial washers are of course a lot more expensive. Um, high efficiency toilets. So if they don't get into one of our programs, like Rebecca spoke about the direct install, we also have a rebate that they can apply for and the sustained reduction rebate that Heather was speaking about, where if there's a, not a program for what they're trying to do, we can see if there's enough water savings that we can offer them some sort of reduction, I'm sorry, some sort of rebate. And then of course, all of our water smart devices like shower heads, aerators, toilet flappers, because it's not always a brand new toilet that you need, sometimes it's just a little bit of a repair um, and hose nozzles. And then of course, we offer all kinds of outdoor rebates as well. There's the irrigation efficiency upgrades, which again, you can see the commercial is a little more um, dollar heavy because they have a larger volume that they would need to do. Um, and then of course, cash for grass, same thing. They can do up to $10,000 worth, whereas residentials only go up to 1,000. We have gray water reuse options, pool cover rebates, and pool removal rebates. We also partner with Sonoma Marin Partnership to do a variety of other outdoor programs, which include like the garden, excuse me, the Garden Sense program, Water Smart Plant Picker, which is getting updated as we speak, uh, the Eco Friendly Garden Tour, Water Waste Report Form, Water Smart Plant Labels, DIY Toolkits, and a variety of other programs. Our water use efficiency audits, and I'm gonna to speak to last year since that's a complete year and I can give you full figures on that, um, included last year 116 outdoor audits. These are audits where we go on site and work with the customer to try to find if there are rebates available or savings that can be found. We did 108 residential indoor, and then we did 32 indoor commercial and 22 outdoor commercial. The commercial take a, a lot longer time to put together and a lot longer time for the assessment or the audit because the space of course is a lot bigger. One of the cool things we participated in was the die tab challenge, which was part of fix a leak week. We had 253 customers that requested die tabs be mailed to them within the city of Santa Rosa. We had 32 people actually submit entries. So they may or may not have used the die tabs, but 
of the people that wanted to, 32 people actually entered. And there was a prize of $25 provided by the Sonoma Marin Partnership. And of those, five people reported that they found leaks, 10 requested more information on saving water, five requested replacing toilet information, and six for toilet parts. So these are folks that we might not have reached otherwise, and it's good to get in touch with them. Those 10 that wanted information on saving water, I believe we scheduled audits with all of them. Our Cash for Grass program has been very successful. We've removed 4 million square feet plus, and we've issued over $2 million in rebates. We've had almost 4,000 sites participate, and there's over a billion gallons of water saved over the life of the program. So as you can see, water conservation, drought, and increased incentives have helped us get folks really on board with this, which is great because we have a lot of things coming down the pike that will require people to remove lawns. So the further along we can get here, the better. And then we've also had substantial success with our AMI program, with our water use efficiency team, with finding continuous use issues. Between January 2020, when we had almost our full AMI installation to April 2023, we found over 2,000 leaks through our AMI system. Each leak, the average leak, I should say, was approximately 49 gallons and lasted about 13.4 days. This is after AMI was installed. So you can imagine how much water was being wasted. And it was over 2 million gallons have been saved by finding these leaks. Prior to AMI being installed, it could take up to six weeks for a customer to be notified that they had a leak or that they possibly had a leak because it had to be a whole billing cycle. Plus we had, had to have time to run and work reports then we had to notify the customers. So this is a huge savings and we can actually notify customers within a couple of days. As part of the AMI system, we are excited to set up the customer portal. And this way the customers can then watch for leaks on their own. They can find their hourly, daily and weekly and monthly water usage on there. And we encourage everyone to sign up for it. You can also set up your own thresholds so if you want to be notified if you've used over a certain amount of water in a day or in a week, it will send you an email if you set that up. And some of my customers have even set their threshold to zero, so they get an email each day. That way they just know how much water they've used each day without even having to go into the portal. So far we have 7,559 customers signed up for the portal. It's been a little bit of a slow ramp up, but we do send out advertising on the regular basis. And then we also hand out flyers to any customers participating in any of our audit programs or any events that we table. So customer outreach, we do a lot of customer outreach with water use efficiency, trying to get our programs out there, let people know what's going on. We sent over 4,000 postcards last year, and we received in over 3,000 calls from customers just to water use efficiency. We do presentations out in the community to share our programs. We've done a Sat the Santa Rosa Garden Club, Water Conservation Showcase, AWWA Winter Workshop, and Spring Lake Village I just did this morning. We also participate in a lot of events like St. Patrick's Day. You can see the picture of Rebecca and Holly there at our booth. Creek Week, Sonoma County Business Showcase, the Land Paths Harvest Festival, and the Senior Expo. We don't participate in every event every year because sometimes it becomes a little bit too saturating. You get a lot of the same customers. So we try to mix it up as much as we can. And it also depends on how much staff we have available. We also do put on workshops. We have water smart gardening workshops, water wise gardening, gardens and landscape, tree care during drought, rain gardens and swales, retain the rain, programming your irrigation controller, which of course is this Saturday. And then we have a family day set up for insect investigation. So that one's coming up soon. Um, I believe it is on May 18th. 
<laughs> Maybe a little more of the, yes, a little more of the friendly insects, I think. <laughs> awesome. Oops. There we go. So Santa Rosa Water is here to help folks save, and we are glad to be a resource for people. We hope that you'll check out our website at srcity.org slash watersmart or email us if you have any questions. And of course, we have a lot of information about our re rebates up on the Santa Rosa City website as well. Thank you, and I'll entertain any questions. Thank you, Ms. Hatfield. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? <laughs> comments do. So uh, I have three. Three. First of all, Ms. Hatfield, very nice presentation. Thank you, Mr. Um, three comments, questions. Uh, the, uh, the sustained reduction, uh, you listed it for residential, but that's also available for commercial as well, isn't it? Yes. Okay. That's what I thought. And I didn't see landscape, uh, laundry to landscape. Did I miss it? Or is it, do we, do we, do we so still? So that's, that's what we call the gray water. Oh, we just call it gray water. We yeah. got that snappy yeah. little title. Okay, so we still have that where we give the valve and all that, the workshop and... Um, you know, I don't know that we've done the workshop in some time, but we do offer the rebate. Okay. And then just a general comment. Uh, well, first of all, uh, that a the having uh, water billing contact people when you have the leaks generated through AMI is fantastic program. Um, for, certainly I've been called, both my neighbors have been called and, or not called, but got, gotten a letter in the mail. So that I, kudos to that program. I can just see that as, you know, yeah, that's, that's, that's really working well. And if I may speak to that, um, I know that we're one of the only cities where water use efficiency partners with their billing department to work through that process. When I have spoken in other areas, people say, well, how do you get billing to cooperate or how do you get water use efficiency to buy in? And it's like, it has to be a team effort. So I've been trying to spread that message around when I speak at, at events. I can see how that was an issue. Uh, one last comment though on the AMI program, and I'm thinking it might be an easier sell if, um, if uh, our IT people can do this is create an app. Everybody wants an app. So, as it is now, you got to go to the internet and log on and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and with most people use phones and things, and the app seems to work so much better. So maybe that's something to consider. So IT will say no, that's something we don't do. But anyway, that's just a I think that would be through our vendor that provides the, the well, product. Like right. And, and I'm actually on the, um, the committee for that software. The, um, I'm not going to think of the name of it. Pardon me. Anyway, so I could definitely recommend that to them and see what their thoughts are, why they haven't done that so far, um, because I think that's a really great idea. Okay, and that is a, uh, that vendor, vendor was picked through a citywide they work on many programs for the city, so it's not like we have a whole lot of leverage with them to say, if we'll find somebody else, we can't do this. It's basically they have to do our finance and all the other programs as well. No, it's actually it's it's through Meter Sense Compass. Um, so it's a, it's the software that's specifically for AMI. It links to our billing system, but it is not part of our billing system. Oh. Yeah. Product Advisory Committee, that's the, <laughs> I knew it would come to me. Um, and they're very open to hearing our ideas because they want to improve the software and want to know what people are asking for. So many of our ideas have gone into the software and they've made a lot of improvements based on our recommendations. So. <laughs> they want an app. Okay, well, I'll be happy to bring that back to them. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Just a, a couple of comments that, you know, with being so the world, right, we're all so busy and there's so many things happening at all times. It's it's a department to be proud of and a program to be proud of. You've clearly done everything that we can do to help 
anyone who wants to take that step to call the city and to say, hey, I need some help with this. How do I get to a more efficient home? Or I don't even know where to start. What is available? How do we, I know in my, my day job, I try and figure out how do we put resources together in, in digestible ways so that people can access them and pay attention to them. Now what I've started doing is saying, bookmark this one thing. If you just bookmark this one thing, it will get you everywhere you need to go. And I've, um, and I've, I've looked at our site and uh, you make it as available and as clear as you possibly can. And so I appreciate that quite Thank a bit. Um, yeah, that's my, that's my big comment for the day. Thank you very much. If there's no other comments, I guess we will Chair, move to public comment. Can Before we go to public comment, sure. can I just provide an answer and a big thank you to Peter Martin for getting it on the question that a uh, uh, board member Wright asked about um, RRWA? <laughs> Please. Yeah, so um, RRWA is going to, uh, they've already done the video contest for this year. They're gonna announce the awards at uh, 5 p.m. on May 9th at the SCP Energy Center. And uh, this year's theme was uh, put a lid on it, uh, L-I-D in, in capital letters. And that was, uh, it's connecting low impact development and how it uh, impacts the Russian River. So, so yes, still doing that contest and that'll be uh, at, at 5 p.m. on May 9th at the Sonoma Clean Power Energy Center. Thank you so much. seeing no one with my microphone off the entire time. Uh, <laughs> um, if there's no other comments or questions, I guess we can adjourn today's meeting. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.